Noodle bud. So I did a thing. Uh, obviously, I picked up a pen, but this is like a pretty, pretty big deal of a pen. The first time I saw one, I've been, I've been wanting one. It's been a long time. Let's just, let's just show you what this is. There it is right there. It's got a very unique profile. I haven't inked it or anything. I just picked it up today, came in the mail, and I went down and got it. This is an Omas 360. Now, my grail of grail pens is this same pen in wild celluloid, but they go for, I don't know, $1,500, $1,600, $2,000 US, which is just insane. But here we go. I mean, uh, yeah, just a unique profile. I saw this online at some point. Maybe it was a review, and I went, wow, that looks amazing. I want one of those at some time. And at a Vancouver Pen Club meet, a few folks had one. I got to hold one, and I just went, wow, that feels fantastic. I know for some folks, this grip, because it's all triangular, they don't like that. It's not comfortable for them. And that's how I got this pen. Actually, one of the viewers, I, the posting's gone. So I didn't, I can't remember who it was. I think they go by the name of Big D Little Uston, I think, on Instagram. They tagged me. This pen came up for sale on, I think it's called like Virtual Pen Show on Instagram. And I saw it and it was a pretty reasonable price. I have another pen I'm going to sell to fund this one and uh, so far so good it is in fantastic condition it you can see a little micro scratching on here we're going to polish that up but the bands and everything look good you got the omas italy here that it's it's really really good uh yeah these things sometimes the bands you'll see they start to go or they're chipped or partially broken or there's brazing everything on here it's oh, again black on black there we go we'll get a the focus is gonna be terrible as always but with a black pen it's always bad but yeah overall there's no chips or dings cracks nothing the cap works nicely the nib here like this band here seems really really good this is usually the trouble one and it's absolutely fantastic so the person who bought this one this was a catch and release for them they obviously probably really like the look of it and the whole idea of it. We got Ebonite feed, uh, gold nib, of course, 18KM for medium, two tone OMAS. But uh, how could you not like the looks of this? But yeah, they got it and they just said the way they grip, this just didn't work for them. I understand it's not for everybody, but it's definitely for me. So, uh, yeah, I've just been looking at this thing since I picked it up. I didn't bring a bottle of ink with me to try it out right away, which I really wanted to do. So we're just going to go through this. I have not used this. I want to polish this up, ink it up, give it a go, and see if this is everything I uh, hope it is going to be. So uh, let's do it. Okay, so here's what I got going on. We're going to try to go with the least amount of stuff to get it looking the best. If I have to go more with a heavy scratch remover or even a light sanding like a micro mesh, I'll save that for another video. I just want to get it so it's looking a little bit better. What the X-Acto knife is for is for the tape. So with these, you just really want to be careful. So I'm going to tape this off, these bands here and the one down here. Uh, just to protect them a little bit because the plating can be quite thin on these and they're quite fragile so i just want to protect that with everything i do here and then uh, we'll see we'll probably just go with the number two buff that out polish it up and hopefully that'll be enough but if i got to do more uh, no big deal we'll do that for another video okay we're taped up I just use electrician's tape on there for now I just have a quick look at the nib and i noticed it looks like uh, again focus there we go. It looks like it's off a little bit. You can see that's, you know, the nib is kind of crooked this way a touch. The tines might be out a little, just a little, little bit there. Um, but so probably a little bit of an adjustment on the nib just to get it right where it should be. I was looking at the gap under here and I can't really show. Oh, you can just see, I can see a little daylight underneath there. That part there, right up in there, that should be tight. So uh, I will have to do a little bit of an adjustment just to get the nib sitting on the feed a little bit better. But I, I mean, it should be uh, okay for it to write. 
no problem, but it needs just a little bit of tweaking. All right, just put a little bit on and we'll uh, just add more as we need it. But I just, I actually like to just rub it in by hand. You can use a cloth afterwards, but I just like to rub it in by hand and just get it in there. So I'll probably speed up the video here. So it's just not me rubbing a pen for 20 minutes, <laughs> but you'll get the general idea. So we're getting most of the scratches out. There are still some. This is the biggest one here. That's nothing major though. Like that can that can come up pretty darn easy. Um, actually, you know what? I might just put put a little bit of this stuff on there because other than that, the rest of it's pretty good. I think uh, just the the buffing afterwards will just shine that all up. So I think I'll just do that one spot there with that thicker scratch, and that might be enough. Okay, so bit of an update. Uh, I'm having to use a flashlight here because power just went out. Um, but I still want to finish polishing up this pen here. <laughs> so I got my went and got my little flashlight doing this in the dark. Um, yeah, so I don't know if we're going to be able to do this together because I can't really film it like this. This is kind of ridiculous. But what I did is I just took the tape off and then just went with this stuff just to clean it, all that put a little bit of this wax on. I got my little polishing cloth. So I'm just giving it the once over the little mini brush here to get the fins in the, uh, in the feed there, a little bit of the polish from before. So I'll just clean that out to just give it a thorough cleaning. And then I'll just carry that on to the cap over here as well. Maybe the power will come back on. Um, but I've been waiting for this pen for so long. So this is, this is how I'm actually going to do it. And I'll put some ink in it. You may or may not be able to see me ink it. I don't know. But I will show you how it writes eventually once the power is back on. Piston filler. That I tried the piston knob. It works great. So I'm going to continue on here in darkness. And uh, get the pen shined up. Because that's how bad I want to write with this pen. Hey everybody. So apparently the rest of the audio for this video got totally messed up. And I can't recover it. I also can't redo the video because I'm restoring a pen and you can't unrestore a pen <laughs> and back things up. So anyways, I'm going to have to voice over the rest of this. Basically as deciding between uh, writer's blood or different ink, the writer's blood is beautiful, but it's just so wet. And this is, I think it's going to be a wet pen. So die my midnight. It is checking out the piston. Very happy with it. Nice and smooth. I always worry about that with buying an expensive or vintage secondhand pen with the piston. This thing is nice and smooth. I always try to ask the seller to ask how it is. Are the seals gone? How is the motion? This hold is uh, this is holding ink quite nice. So everything is very good. That's a little quite a bit more work to to rebuild the piston and have to redo that stuff. But this one is absolutely fantastic. So gonna put pen to page and give this thing a try before I go to bed and right away. I was very happy. Nice and soft, unique feel to it. It's always nice when a pen has a bit of a different feel. Something. Well, especially if it's different and nice, but not the same as all your other pens that you have. And I was very happy with this. I like the way it fits my hand, the grip. It's quite enjoyable. The balance, the flow, the nib, everything. Everything I'm doing on this page here. I'm using, a, uh, not Rhodia paper, I'm using Regalia paper, which I absolutely love. It feels fantastic. Came back to it a few days later. I had to call it a night then. And checking out the pen, I wasn't happy with the polish so much. I uh, Yeah, my standard method just to do it kind of quick and dirty wasn't given the result I wanted so I'm like I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to resand the whole body with uh, some micro mesh as well having a look here at the nib better look at it you can see it's crooked so it's not sitting on the feet properly it's it's off a skew so that needs to be fixed I reached out to Josh Lax and he says you might be able to do it within the body if not you get a pull it I wasn't sure how uh, the nib went in there but I'm going to have to do some work to this. I love the pen so far. You know, you, you worry how it's going to fit in the hand and, and write, but yeah, I got to move that nib over. There's a bit of a gap underneath the nib as well uh, with respect to the feed. So it needs a little bit of work to get this thing running properly. So nothing left to do. Pull the nib. I asked him, how do you get the thing out? And he said, that from best memory, you just pull it. So I get one of those little rubber dealies. He likes bike tube. I got the, the drawer liner. And you just rock and pull, rock and pull, and go gentle. <laughs> this is 
brand new pen and it's expensive. I've never owned one, never worked on one. So I'm a little bit worried. What I'm doing here is I'm citing to, to find the spot. So I'm looking, okay, that's where the nib is right now. So I'm citing it to see, am I making a little progress? This could take some time. Overall, I think it took about seven or eight minutes for me to get the nib out. I'm just going gentle, pulling on it. I'm, I'm applying force, but I'm rocking it a bit too. Just not trying to get it out in one fell swoop. And if it's taking time, it's going to take time. And so I had a look and it's moved up a little bit. We got a little bit of movement. So it's gone up, I don't know, maybe a millimeter, something like that. So I'm heading the right direction. So just keep doing what you're doing and just keep taking it easy. And, uh, you know, it'll pay off. No sudden movements. Don't do anything harsh here. It's just a little pen. There's plastic involved. And it's just a gorgeous pen. So you got to take your time. You got to be careful with this stuff and just ease it out. And you'll see here we got it out. So again, like I said, about six, seven, eight minutes, something like that. Everything's in one piece. Nothing's busted. I'm looking at the feet. It looks good. Uh, checking out the barrel in there, making sure everything's good in there. There's no obstructions. So time to uh, assess things. So I also had a look here at the end of the nib. It was quite nice and smooth, but uh, I've noticed there's some canyoning. So it was canyoned um, at the top, not at the bottom. So what you have to do is, is essentially pull the shoulders up a little bit to bring the two sides back together. You need those, that inner slit in the nib to be parallel. And then with the feed here, I had a look at it. Everything's good. It's a very, very basic design, but it has a bit of a, of a curvature to it. So what's happening is it's bowed. Um, so the ends are up. I put it on this piece of flat plate. It was almost tough. It's almost impossible to get you the angle, but it's, it's raised on the ends and it's down in the center. So what's happening is it's pushing the nib up at the end. And we're having like some lift off and uh, yeah, it's just not, it's not sitting right. So the cool thing with Ebonite is you can do something called a heat set and you can reset it. So what happens is you put it on there, you're going to put it in some hot water and it's going to soften the Ebonite and then you can reset the shape of the feed. Nothing crazy. You don't use boiling water. You just use a kind of hot water, depending on the temperature of your faucet, uh, your thermostat and your hot water tank, you might have to warm the water up a little bit. It's going to sit there for a few minutes and again my my hands and voice are not matching up but this is the best i can do <laughs> and what i got here is a coaster so this is a white marble coaster that we had kicking around the house i thought that's a little better i can i can get better contrast i can see light underneath it and so i'd use that as my flat edge and kind of press the feed against it on the back there on the flat and it worked out well it just took i did it i ended up doing it twice but now it sits on here. The nib and feed made up really well. The gap is gone. That sits nice and tight. That's going to be the big issue. If there's lift off between the end, uh, you're not going to have proper ink flow. You'll have hard starting and skipping and stuff like that. So that's all good. Note, if you have one of these polishing cloths, these jeweler's cloths, you might be tempted to use that on the nib to polish it. Only if it's solid gold. This has plating on it. This will remove the plating. So you might go, oh, let me shine up this nib, that beautiful two-tone, get it really uh, screaming sharp and bouncing there. Let it look sparkly. You'll remove all the plating. So don't use those at all. And the body here, I'm like, okay, we've got the nib and feet all good. It's just, uh, it's not what I want. It's not, it's, it's kind of dull. You can see that. This lighting doesn't help, but it's actually good because if it looks, it doesn't look good under this lighting, it's, you got some problems. So yeah, I'm going to, before I even get this pen running, I got to give it the treatment. It's just how I am. So I got my micro mesh pads out. I'll start around 4,000. I'll do 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 12,000. And then I'll probably finish off with a little polish. The nice thing with the micro mesh pads is they're flexible. So especially on a pen like this, it's curved and it's got a bit of a weird curve. You just have to go along and do it. And you could tape that stuff off so you don't get it. I kind of trusted my hand. I time lapse that whole thing and and uh you just don't need to see me polishing a pen for for 20 minutes straight but here we go everything's together the body's nice and shiny i'm very happy with how the the body will look uh in decent lighting now to fit the nib and feedback in just really goes slow i went a couple of millimeters at a time and checking for alignment checking for alignment and i went oh, oh it's off a little bit have to give it a little adjustment and just slowly check it just drive it inch by inch by inch or millimeter by millimeter i want it in there seated properly i want it everything aligned really take your time this is different than 
pull in the nib on a pilot Prera. You just slip it out, slip it in. No, it just, yeah, it's also a real pain to pull out. It's in there, really, really tight fit. But now I'm much happier. Uh, you'll see in some glam shots, the body's looking really, really good now. Uh, the fitment is good. Nib and feed, everything, the piston. Yeah, I'm just admiring this pen now. I got one of these. It's been years. I've been waiting to get one. And memory served me right. It fit nicely in the hand. So I got it, the nib in. It's probably not as deep as it was. I think it's maybe an extra millimeter up. I tried. I, I didn't want to apply any more force. Um, so that was as far as I could get it. These are most likely driven in with a little type of fixture or something like that. I'm okay with it. You can see it's all good now. Everything's sitting flat. I actually just gave it just a tiny little tune there. Now it's perfectly flat. And yeah, the nib is aligned. There's no lift off of the nib at the end of the feed. The gap is gone. So uh, it's polished up. One thing left to do. There we go. Just enjoy the pen. So I've been waiting. I, I, I don't mind buying a pen like this that needs a little bit of work. I know not everyone's up for the challenge. <laughs> and I've never used one of these before either. I don't know if I was, but you know, you can save considerable money if you're willing to put some work into a pen and just take your time, even if it, whatever, if it takes you weeks, whatever. Um, it's sort of kind of the favorite part to me of this hobby. I think that's why I like vintage so much. It's the hunt, it's the find, it's the reward, it's the work. I'm going to like, I'll probably enjoy this pen more than if I bought one in pristine condition because there's a little bit of a memory, a little bit of a story to it. The power went out while I was doing it. I, you know, all my pens that I have like this, my Mont Blanc 149, my Series M that I got, a vintage Parker that I have. Here I'm just checking the, you know, just the weight of the body. It's a light pen. It's perfect. I enjoy having pens where I put some work into. It almost makes it better. But there we go. I don't know what I said in my outro here. All the audio got screwed up. I don't know what's going on. I'm on vacation right now. And I'm recording this voiceover in the in the car because it's the only place that's quiet. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not my top-notch quality for editing and voices and uh, audio and everything. But I'm glad if you've watched this far, thank you for doing so. Uh, writing sample just cannot be any better. I'm super pleased with this. And I've been waiting for one of these pens forever. Just that, you know, just the fact that you can just use the weight of the pen. That's a really good test to check for your ink flow and how well it's working. But uh, there we go. I'm probably reminding you to hit subscribe or something like that and chat with me in the comments. <laughs> it's a shame. I tried four times recompiling the video and the audio just went. But there it is. I'd love to hear from you. You know, what are some Grail pens you're working on? Um, doing this video again, 2.15 in the morning. This is ridiculous what time I'm doing this at. But this is my only free time I get at the house. Four and six-year-old kid, that's it. Let's do some clam shots. Mm -hmm.